sin I sank low, but then I heard about Jesus. What a wonderful hour. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out through His saving power. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way Like a bird out of prison You remember that day? That's taken its flight Like a blind man that God gave back his sight like a poor wretched beggar that's found fortune and fame I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out through his holy name sing it church thank God I am free From this world of sin I've been washed in the blood of Jesus I've been born again Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved By His wonderful grace I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way. Amen. You may be seated. He didn't only set me free. He's walking with me. Amen. He's been a real friend every day, every valley, every trial. It'll make no difference what it is. He specializes in whatever it is you're going through. He'll pull us through. Amen. He'll pull us through. Good to see you in the Lord's house. Hope you come to worship Him. He's worthy. Mary Evelyn, you feel like singing this morning? Amen. Pray for her this morning. At a vision of heaven, what these eyes they did see, as I viewed wept in that sweet eternity I thought I entered that city And I stopped at the gate So anxious to enter I could hardly wait As I entered that city Jesus stood by the door, said, My child, enter in. You are safe forevermore. Want to walk all around to see who I could see. For I had so many loved ones who came. Who is that I did see? Why, that's a little old lady who many times befriended me, helped me in my sickness, in my trouble, a helping hand. Why, that's her there a singing in 
that blessed angel band walked on a little farther. Who is that I did see? Why, that's dad and mama who are just ahead of me. I wonder will they know me? They've been gone for so long with a smile. They remembered, said my child, welcome home. Walked on a little farther. Who is that I did see? Why, that's the old beggar who sat up on the street. But he looked so different sitting there around God's road. I can still hear him a singing while the ages roll on. Oh, yes. Over yonder is a face I remember still. It's the old-fashioned preacher from that church up on the hill. With his Bible, I still see him standing there so many times telling us about this heaven that someday I can call mine. But I must keep on walking so many faces more. So many more faces that I am searching for. But I won't have to hurry I'll take all the time I need, for I'm here forever, throughout all eternity. No, I won't have to hurry, I'll take all the time I need, for I'm here forever throughout all eternity. Man, I appreciate the Lord this morning. As I was uh, this morning, I got up and uh, we was getting ready to come into the kitchen. And uh, last night we was busy working on the house and stuff. And we didn't quite clean up the kitchen like we usually do. There's a few crumbs still on the, the countertop. And as I started to to get the rag and wipe them down, wipe the counters down, just so. Uh, just trying to help out around the house. You know, um, we got an old dog there. As I wiped across the table, a few crumbs hit the floor. And it got up from its place there in front of the heater and come over there and just wanted to, just desiring those crumbs. It even eats the crumbs that falls from the master's table. I thought about my life. I thought about us. You know, God's chosen people, Israel, as Jesus passed through the streets and uh, there's that little woman over there that asked for a healing, I believe it was. And uh, Jesus said, what it is, is it that I have to do with you? 
She said, but master, even the dogs desire. You know, even the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And uh, I'm glad that he not only let me see that, that whenever I was lost in sin, I still had uh, blessings more than I could ever, ever uh, know what I had. But now I'm pulled up to the table of the master. And I thank God for that. I thank God for salvation. Amen. I remember the, I remember the morning that the Lord pulled out a table, pull, pulled out a chair at his table. I remember that morning over there on Boston, about, about right there. That morning, the preacher man asked if there's anybody needed to come to the altar, give their life to the Lord. And I knew that was me that morning. And I sure did. I'm so thankful I give it to him. Amen. Amen. I have what you need, but you keep on searching. I've done all the work, but you keep on working. And when you're running on empty and you can't find a remedy, just come to the well. You can spend your whole life chasing what's missing, but that empty inside just ain't gonna listen. When nothing can satisfy and this world leaves you high and dry, just come to the well. Cause all who thirst will thirst no more And all who search will find what their souls long for The world will try, but it can never feel So leave it all behind and come to the way Bring me your heart, no matter how broken. Just come as you are when your last prayer is spoken. Just rest in my arms a while, and you'll feel the change, my child, when you come to the well. And now that you're full, of love beyond measure your joy is gonna flow like a stream in the desert and soon all the world will see this living water is found in me cause you came to the well and all who thirst will thirst no more and all who search will find what their souls long for. The world will try, but it can never feel. So leave it all behind and come to the well. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This life is a journey, and we're called to walk by faith. There'll always be these mountains in our way. But right here in this moment, may our faith be renewed 
as we recall what God has done and how we've seen him move. If there's anybody here who's found him faithful, anybody here who knows he's able, say amen. If there's anybody here who's seen his power, tomorrow seen it time and time again just say amen sometimes in the darkness it gets hard to see but just be brave and follow where he leads for greater is the one who's in us than he who is in the world. So child of God, remember the battle is the Lord's. If there's anybody here who's found him faithful, anybody here who knows he's able, I certainly have found him faithful. I can say amen to all those things. He's been everything you could ever imagine him to be and a whole lot more. Amen. I got saved that night. I was scared to death. I was going to die and go to hell any second. And uh, But once I got saved, I realized he is, man, alive at the things he is. The benefits, Brother Jimmy, is unbelievable of being in this family. I'm talking about somebody that wasn't worthy to be alive, much less be in this family. But he adopted us in, grafted us in, and I'm thankful I'm in. How about you? Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me this morning, the book of Ephesians, chapter number 2. Ephesians, chapter number 2. Good to see you in God's house this morning. I do desire your prayers just a few moments that the Holy Ghost power would come by. Would you pray for me, please? Amen. Let's all act excited about being in the house. Amen. I'm thankful. It's a good place to be. Amen. I appreciate the pillow and ground of the truth. I love the house of the Lord. So please pray for me just a few moments this morning. Verse number 11 of Ephesians chapter number 2. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you are without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, 
so making peace that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them which were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. You may be seated. Amen. I didn't really want to. I, well, I didn't say I didn't want to. Didn't have plans on reading all of it. But I love the Word of the Lord, and I love how it all fits together. Amen. I want to preach on just a simple phrase, and uh, please pray that the Spirit will come by and just help us a little while. Verse number 13, the first two words out of that, ver that verse right there says, But now. Amen. So that's what I want to preach on just a few moments this morning. Amen. On but now. I'm thankful. Amen. God ain't never made no mistake. God ain't never, he ain't never a day late. He ain't never, a, amen, a dollar short. I'm thankful, Brother Homer, that he knows exactly uh, what we stand in need of. I'm thankful, amen. I, somebody said, I wish that I live back under the law. Amen. I don't. I'm thankful that I live under grace. Amen. The law, it was perfect. Amen. God ain't never done nothing that wasn't perfect. I'm thankful, amen, that what God did, what God wrote down on them tablets of stone over yonder when Moses was up on the Mount Sinai. Amen. It was enough to keep the sin rolled ahead. Amen. It was perfect, Brother Homer, but when the law had come to an end, amen, God sending His Son the likeness of sinful flesh, I'm thankful for the hinging point amen between law and grace it's a amen I'm thankful to be living under grace today amen but there's a reason why we're here and it's called Jesus Christ I'm thankful brother uh, brother Brandon uh, for the freedoms that we have for the liberty that I have to worship the Lord amen I'm thankful for Jesus Christ amen and amen amen back under the law uh, there was a lot of things that they did that I'm thankful that we don't have to do. Amen. I'm thankful that I ain't got to take a lamb out of the flock and keep it locked up and feed and to take it before a man. Amen. To inspect it and hopefully that that high priest amen was without sin and take it behind the veil and would roll the sin ahead and God amen would come down and roll the sin ahead for the, uh, the chosen people of God for one more year. Amen. Now that worked back then but I'm thankful for the Homer. Amen. That I can come boldly unto the throne of grace. I'm thankful for now. Amen. I said I'm thankful for now. I was thinking as we're standing up here anointing people and I don't take it lightly when we do that. Amen. There's a lot of times when I bow my head when there's a lot of people need prayer. If I remember all of you I've literally got to open my eyes and look around because my mind amen can't remember everybody. Amen. Just that fast but I'm thankful Hallelujah, you can take, amen, they still people uh, that go take their petitions to amen and expect that man, amen, to go before God. I'm thankful you can talk to me about your prayer request and need help in me praying for you, amen. But when I can't get a hold of God, you can go to God, hallelujah. Uh, the Bible said you can come boldly unto the throne of grace. As I said on Wednesday night, when Jesus died, Brother Daniel, that veil was rent in twain from top to bottom and now he said whosoever will uh, let him come I want to ask you have you ever this week got out on your knees amen and called on a God hallelujah I'm thankful I didn't have to be there for you brother Brandon there's a God that made the universe and his ear turns your way amen but now hallelujah but now I can go to God as little and as no good as I am and have been a Gentile amen but God grafted us in and to the livestock amen and now we can have fruit living in our own life thank God now I have victory 
victory through Jesus Christ. Now I can go to him. Now, amen, he looks at the Gentiles. Amen, as his own children. Ain't you glad that you're adopted in this morning? I'm glad I'm grafted in. I ain't who I used to be. He saved me. He wrenched way down. Amen, the things I used to do, now I don't do because of what he did in my life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, amen, I'm a new person. Amen. Back under the law, whenever they would bring all those sacrifices, amen, it didn't change the conscience of a man. It didn't change who you really was. It just rolled ahead what you did. Amen. But I'm thankful. John said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away of the sins of the whole world. I've heard your testimony, amen, of being alcoholics and drug addicts. But now we are made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. But now, amen, I don't want to do what I used to do. But now, why is that? Amen, I didn't go to a man. Amen, and him changed me. I went to the man, and he made a new creature out of me. He changed my nature. I'm thankful for now. I know we're living in a wicked day, but we got a good God. Amen, the one that changed my life. You remember where you was when he saved you? Amen, you remember where you was when he turned your life around? You may have not have known anything about God, but you knew you felt different. Amen, your life was different. You've been different. You can grow in grace because of now. I'm thankful now. Hallelujah, I appreciate God that changed my life and has made me what I am today by the grace of God. Amen. I was just thinking as they beat him on the whipping post, he said, I was striped for your healing. Amen. I know it's a little different this morning. He would go by funeral possessions. He would touch the dead. They would raise. He would spit on the ground and make clay and anoint eyes and say, go wash. They'd come back to him. But if he wasn't present with whatever was going on, they went back home the same way they was when they come. Jesus, when he was walking in shoe leather, could only be one place at one time. Amen. They had to go look him up because they knew he was passing through. And they wanted to go wherever he was, Brother Johnny, because we've tried everything. We've spent all of our money. We've got even worse. Oh, yeah, but if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be healed. Amen. 33 and a half years he walked. The way I read the scripture, he started his ministry at 30, and he had a ministry about three and a half years. And the Bible said I suppose that if you could write everything he'd done the world couldn't even contain the books amen he was on he was going about a mission raising the dead opening the eyes of the blind amen changing a five loaves and two fish into enough to feed five thousand amen but if you wasn't in that congregation you might be over yonder and still go hungry that was then but oh but this is now hallelujah I I'm glad Jesus can be over at your house and be over at mine at the same time. I said, I'm glad he can be over at your house and over at mine at the same time. Amen. He said, I must go away. But he said, if I go away, I'll send you another comforter. Amen. I want to ask you, has he been comfort to you? I said, has he been comfort to you? Hallelujah. He can work a miracle at two separate places at the same time. I'm glad when he went back to the father. Father, and he sent back the comforter I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost I said I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost he's been there for me and he'll go with me all the way Amen. hallelujah I was striped for your healing I wonder if anybody's ever experienced any of that here sure you have sure you have God's done a healing in some of y'all's life that doctors can't do I'm talking about in your body. Amen. I can just relate to you. Thought you had cancer. 
Went back to the doctor, and they said it was just your spleen that had been just busted all to pieces in a motorcycle wreck. Amen. Now trying to work on its own again. Amen. Like I said on Wednesday night, the doctor can take a knife and make an incision, but they ain't but one that's a healer. Amen. It don't make no difference if they graduated at the top of the class. If God says you're done, you're done. Amen. They ain't nobody can keep you alive. Oh, but back yonder, when they died, they just died in the faith, not yet receiving the promise, and has put into a place called paradise. Amen. But now, that's what I'm preaching on. But now, amen. Paul said to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. When I die, I'm not going to a hole in the ground. I'm a coin in the sky. Hallelujah. I want you to know when I die, thank you, Jesus. I may not have a dollar in my pocket, but it ain't what you got in this world that matters. It's what you got in that one. Amen. I've got my treasures laid up. I'm thankful. Praise the Lord. It don't matter if you got a casket made of wood or one made of gold. It'll make a hill of beans. But what I got at night on my on my knees in that altar. Amen. Changed my world. I said it changed my world. It made me homesick for a land where I can meet the one that changed my life. But now, amen, we was in the world having no hope. You think about that. No hope. Has the doctors ever said that to your family? They've given us no hope. But Jesus never says those words. Amen. Because he's a lively hope. If I had hope only in this life, Brother Johnny, I'd be miserable. Amen. The Bible said in the book of Job, all that a man hath will he give for his life. If I had cancer and I was a billionaire, I'd give every dollar to spend a few more days with my family. Amen. Because I love to live. I said I love to live. Amen. But God, whoo, hallelujah. Amen. When he died, he made it possible. Amen. That there's something after this world. I said there's something after this world. Amen. When I die, on this side or when Jesus comes in the cloud this is only a place to get ready uh, to leave this old wicked world I want to ask you are you ready are you ready if he comes today if you die today are you ready I want to say I'm glad I'm ready and because of what he did he made it possible for us to get ready and if you're not ready you better get ready because he's coming and this ain't all they are to it there's life after death Hallelujah. But now we're made nigh. We were Gentiles, dogs. We were nothing in the eyes of God. My daddy, I've heard him say it many times, Brother Carl Soulsby. I'd bring him little old beagles in the basement and they'd have ticks all over them and fleas playing with them, petting on them. He'd come in the basement from work and he'd say, you get that dog out of here. Now you can have a dog in your house if you want to. I don't care what you do. You can sleep with it probably I care. But daddy said, a house ain't no place for a dog. Come on, don't get mad at him. Talk to him. He would get that dog out of here. So I'd have to take the dog out. Because he said, ain't no dog going to stay in my house. Come on, talk to him. Hey Amen. I ain't preaching to get your dog in the house. I'm preaching, against, I'm preaching on Gentiles. Y'all are acting like I'm preaching against your poodle. Your poodle ain't going to do nothing for you. Amen. I better not get myself right here. But Jesus, when he died, I mean the, the Gentiles was not even, were not even welcome to the covenants of promise. The promise was not, didn't even involve us. I mean, we were, we were just outcast. Stay away from us. Oh, but when Jesus come, he went around and sat down on the well of the outcast. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I'm thankful when Jesus, I remember, I was thinking as I was singing up there this morning. Amen. Over yonder, up there on Grace Free World Baptist Church in Crusoe, North Carolina. I closed my eyes and I could vision that little place up there in the front of that church. And I was thinking I'd love to have a piece of carpet and tack it on the wall. And to most people... 
it would look raggedy and say what in the world is that but I'll tell you what that was that was where I planted my knees amen when I come to the end of my world and said I've tried it all I want to try it Lord I need your help amen and they ain't a heart that's too broke I love that song you sing Taylor bring me your heart yeah, it don't matter how broke it is uh, because I paid the price and I can put her back together hallelujah for a man that went all the way I said all the way and what the world says stay away he opened the door up and said come on in the house dog I've got you a place at the table and he don't look at you like a dog he looks at you like a son and I'm thankful to be a part of the family because of now we're made now by the blood of Jesus hallelujah amen I'm thankful that God even the atheists have to worship God oh no they don't believe there's a God every time they write a check they acknowledge there's a God Because days March the what? 5th, 2023. And it marks 20, that many years, 2023 years, since the law come to an end and grace picked up. 2023 years ago, everything changed. But now. But now, I was thinking the other day up at my mom, dad's, lots of people, lots of people, kids are fussing about this. You know how kids are. They want to do this, that wants to do this, that and doing that and this and doing this. And I thought, Jesus never fussed today in his life. He couldn't have. He wouldn't have been perfect. Never said a bad word. Never had ill will towards nobody. Loved everybody. Devil come against him with everything that was to come against him with because he wanted him to fall. Brother Tim, he knew if he could get him drowned on the sea. Lord have mercy, you can't drown him. Because sin brings death. You can't kill it when it ain't got no sin. Hallelujah. That's the reason why they, I believe when that Roman soldier, Brother Albert, come dragging that cat of nine tails out of there. Amen. Everybody was watching. He thought if I've ever put a show on, i got to do it now. And he beat him so bad, nobody could recognize him. His entrance stared up at him, but he still put that cross on his back. Amen. I've never beat a man this hard, and he still ain't going to die. I'm going to kill him. No, you ain't, sir, because he come for one reason, and that was to go to that hill because he said if I be lifted up from the earth he said I'll draw all men unto me I've got to kill him before he gets there oh but ain't you glad when he looked up in the heaven with that crown of thorn on his head amen and his entrance looking up at him when he said it is finished amen you know what he did he is only getting started that's when the first page of grace rolled over and now and now and now we can come to that one man because he got up on Easter Sunday morning and he's alive and he's alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The testament is no good until the testator dies. I've got a brown envelope at my house. It's got the will of Harden Burdell Wheeler in it. That ain't worth the paper it's wrote on until they're gone. So when Jesus died, he took his own blood and placed it on the mercy seat in heaven. His own blood. He didn't take a turtle dove. He didn't take the blood of a, a goat or a sheep. He took his own blood, which he just spilled on every drop of it, Kaylee, so that you could walk from that altar where you say, Lord, forgive me. Do you remember where you got saved? Wherever it was, when you get down on your knees on that carport, a wretched sinner on your way to hell. Amen. He took his own blood and he placed it on the mercy seat. And I believe God said, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. They ain't going to be a sin so wicked that if they'll call on this 
precious blood that I will forgive them. Amen. God can't look on sin, but God can through his son, I said through his son, forgive you, hallelujah, of who you are. Ain't you glad you ain't who you used to be? And it ain't because of what you've done. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm glad I'm forgiven. And now, and now, 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting all your care on me. If he could walk by your pew this morning, he'd say, just let me have it. Because I care. I don't know who to talk to about my problems. He said, tell me about it. I can. As soon as you walk out the door, he don't forget. Sissy, he knows every heartbeat, every thought. He knows the intents of your heart. He knows it all. And ain't it good to know that you can call on him. Hannah was moving her mouth and not saying a word. The high priest in that day said she's drunken. She just said, no, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. He said, whatever it is you ask will be done the appointed time. The great high priest tuned in her problem. You may be here this morning while he begins to play. I'm glad that there was a change of priesthood. He said we have a great high priest. We have one that can be touched by the feelings of our infirmity. There's God Tucker up in heaven sitting at the right hand of the Father that's looking everybody's way. He knows what you need. He knows what I need because of now. He got up. He's alive forevermore, Homer. And he's got the keys. If you're here this morning, you've got things in your life you need to fix up between him and God. Between you and God. Now you can do that. Just you and him right here on the altar. You don't have to tell me nothing. You can tell me all your problems and beg me to forgive you. And you still go to hell. But if you'll come to him. Say I need to get some things fixed up between me and you God. And mean it in your heart. He'll forgive you and he's the only person that can do it. They ain't a greater feeling to know that you're forgiven. Now there's a man that can forgive you. Let's all stand to our feet. You may be here this morning. You have burdens that you need to bring and Bring them to God. Bring them. You may have children. You may not carry my children to God. You can. You may have grandchildren. You may have people in your family. You may have problems of your own. You want to come and lay her on the, on the altar. Now you can do that, see. God's got an open ear to minister to every problem you have. I've got a lot of burdens in my heart. But now I've got somebody I can talk to. You say, I've got an illness in my body. Well, now you got somebody. I ain't going to tell you he's going to heal you. But I will tell you he'll give you grace if you don't. Lord, I love you. If you're here and you got anything you need to bring to him, now it's possible because of what he's done. Lord, I love you. We love you, Jesus.